What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Pro Winston here. Um, I'm doing an interview right now with Ryan Miles. As mostly I know him by Ryan. His first name is Christopher. But let's keep it on the Ryan flow. Um, I'm gonna have him explain to y'all what he did today with his deck. So go ahead, bro. Talk. Uh, today I went uh, XL and split with uh, Scott at the uh, Philly Regional. So I went undefeated. Um, there were eight rounds and with Scott. So. <laughs> Um, the last player, the last person you played was Stephen Harris. Explain how that match was. Um, game one, he didn't open very well. Like he had a lot of tuners, so it was pretty easy. And uh, game two, like he had some good plays, but I had a lot of control before. And just getting out Scott Dragon, and especially Twin Dragons wouldn't work in that match. So I beat that by two of them. When he my body just scrap dragon, was that devastating or was Not that at like? All. Um, I, I have a pretty good matchup against Quick Draw because they like to blow board, but I've already got a Scott Dragon on board. And Scott Dragon is actually a special summon a dude from my graveyard, and usually it's going to be a golem, so I can just make another scat dragon really easily. So when he my body, my scat dragon, I special the golem, uh, special the goblin from my grave, just made another one, and then just kept out the play I was doing. So it didn't really hurt me at all, I just killed the play. Alright, so um, I know about you was playing, I questioned you about your scrap deck versus Dale's scrap decks in his video. Talk about Dale's deck, if um, you've seen it, the I've, play. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, the main issue I had with it was that it was really trying to be uh, really, really focused on like getting your cards, but I don't think it's necessary as he made it. Like, mm -hmm. The three duality and I think two or three upstart didn't really do it for me. I don't think duality is that necessary in this kind of deck. Uh, I do play one because I am playing a very low monster count, but I didn't think that three was necessary. Uh, I don't feel like paying for three, honestly. But also the upstart goblins, I didn't think they were necessary as well. And having uh, having the set that, that I have right now, having the dark tosses and having a lot of the good traps that I have instead of like trees, uh, the main thing I have. He has a lot of rumors to play with extra spell cards because he's playing the decrees and he needs those. But I decide decrees. I completely forego them my main build. I don't like the decrees as a main thing. It's my problem with it. All right, all right. Well, no offense to Dale. No, no offense to Dale. Um, this is personal preference. All right, so let's so let's show Dale what you talked with him. Let's see if he can. <laughs> All right. And explain why the the tech cards in there. Okay, I definitely will. Uh, three Chimera is very standard. Um, he special summons your beasts and makes your scrap dragon, so that's very, very important. Uh, next is three goblins. These are colored on for the black outline. Um, but he's another tuner. I like playing three because he walls out for a bit because he can't be destroyed by battle. So uh, he's important. And he's also one of your tuners, which is very important. I also play three scrap beasts. Uh, he's a four star tuner. And he's another scrap monster. And both goblin and beast have the effect where if they are destroyed by a scrap card, uh, then they can select a scrap monster in your graveyard and add it back to your hand, which will help you recycle Chimera a lot and just bring out Scrap Dragon turn after turn after turn. So the object of the deck is recycle Chimera? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Just recycle it. Keep getting out Scrap Dragon. Um, you use Chimera and you use Golem, but I primarily focus on Chimera. Uh, I play two spies. I did actually take this from Dale's build. Uh, he was playing two spies at the time uh, when I saw his build. I was playing two spies on one guard. And after dropping the guard, I found that two spies actually is pretty consistent, and I'm fine with two spies. And they're basically just, basically just synchro fodder. Um, you set a spy first turn, and then you can make an Arcanite with it with a goblin, or a scrap dragon with it with a beast, basically. Uh, my Spirit Reaper, uh, he's pretty good. Um, scrap dragon has a very good power to clear the board and to keep monsters off the field. And then bringing a Spirit Reaper in after that and knocking cards at hand is also very good. And also keeping him face down and, you know, solid and slowing down the game really helps because scraps wreck on the slow play. That's just how the deck functions. Uh, Summoner Monk uh, is used to get Beast. You discard a spell card and get a special summon a Beast and synchro for a Scat Dragon. This deck is very, very focused on getting out Scat Dragon. Uh, one Golem. Uh, I only play one because I don't like getting too many in my hand. I don't have many ways to get him out of my hand except for tributing for him, and I don't like that. Normally, I'll Scrap Storm him to the graveyard, but Scrap Golem is still very, very important. You need to play one at least and make sure you can get him to the graveyard once you get out Scrap Dragon. Because his he is what keeps Scrap Dragon alive. When Scrap Dragon finally dies, if you bring out Golem, if you have a tuner in grave, you can special summon it, level four or lower, and then make a Scrap Dragon, or even make a Twin Dragon. Uh, Morphing Dart is really, really actually important in this deck. Because I'm only pl I'm playing such a low monster count, I have a lot of chances to set big back rows and then set a Morphing Dart. And because I'm playing three Book of Moons, I can dodge black rows pretty easily. So he's, he's actually very key. I got a lot of game wins off of this card just because GBs can't handle a first turn Morphing Dart.
Um, on the south now, uh, that was only 15 monsters, by the way. You want to keep it pretty low, in my opinion. Uh, next is Three Book of Moon. Three Book of Moon is essential this format, in my opinion. Um, I'm not playing Solemn Warning, so Book of Moon is absolutely essential. I need to play it in three. It's also a Summoner Monk target. Um, three Scotch Storm. This card is uh, very central to the deck. If you don't know what it does, um, you select it, you select the face-up scat monster you control, you send one scat monster from your deck to your graveyard, which usually is going to be a chimera, then you draw a card, which is really cool, and then you destroy the selected scat monster. And what you're normally going to do is destroy either a goblin or a beast, so that way when its effect resolves, a uh, beast is going to be destroyed by a scat effect because it's got storm, and you're going to get the chimera back to your hand. And then next turn you have a really easy setup to make a uh, scat dragon. And this is also a quick play spell, so you can set it and activate it on your opponent's turn, and you can use it to dodge bottom of travel, dimensional prison, air force, threshold tribute, all of that. Uh, next, two MST. Uh, this is a little bit of main board heat for gatekeepers, which I've heard is my worst matchup, but I have not yet dueled it actually. Um, it hits Necka Valley, and also I think it's very important that it's noted that setting an MST and then bringing out a Scat Dragon, you can target the MST, target an opponent's card, and then chain MST for a plus one. Uh, next is two Scat Yard. Uh, I like two scap yard. I can usually side out one, and that's very important because this deck sides very, very heavy. Uh, so two scap yard gets me my tuners, which are very essential. And um, yeah, scap yard is, searches your deck for a scap tuner. Uh, I am playing one duality just to add a little bit of consistency with it. Um, you, usually it ends up being a scap dragon target because I need I usually special summon every turn. So, but it has gotten me out of a lot of holes. Uh, one dark hole, uh, pretty obvious there. One giant tunade. Uh, one mind control. This uh, is an absolute necessity in my opinion. Um, I know one of the other problems I had with Dale's video was that he didn't. Act, he said he didn't like mind control, and I think that's honestly kind of silly. I live by mind control. You can take a tuner, and you, or you can take a non-tuner and sync it with your tuners. I mean, you can take it, pop their card, and then I mean, if you have a step dragon already on the field, you mind control their monster, destroy it, and destroy their other cards. Like that's what I did against Stephen Harris game two, was that I mind control his only face down monster, and then pop his only face down spell trap, but then I had free to summon and everything. Uh, next one, Monster Born, and one Cold Wave, also very important. Because you're going to be making Chimera plays under Cold Wave, then you can pop their back row, yada, yada, yada. Uh, two Bottomless Chap Holes, uh, I like Bottomless. Uh, two Dark Coffins, this is my tech. Um, I'm not a big fan of Wild Tornado, as most people suggest, uh, because I like getting the cards out of the hand. Most of the time, what's going to happen when I use Dark Coffin is that I'm going to pop their only monster on the field. Uh, that's a pretty good at controlling the monsters on board. So when I destroy Dark Coffin and destroy their only monster, Monster, and it doesn't really give me much room to do anything with like Wild Tornado. Like I could destroy a back row and then destroy a their face up monster with Big Tornado, but that's not really I don't I don't think it's good. Uh, because I think hitting the hand is better for disrupting. And I play two MST, Trap Stun, Cold Wave, Trinity. Back row is usually not that big of an issue. And if it is, I have Scrap Storm, you know, chain off the of bottom with it, all that. Plus Dark Coffin can't be seven tools on there yeah. today. Uh, Dark Coffin can't be negated in like any way, shape, or form. You can't seven tools it. You can't start a dragon it, you can't Jinzo it, you can't trap stone it, you can't decree it. Even under cold wave, this card will activate. Because it act it's, there's this really weird ruling on it. I looked it up on the wikia. Um, as far as I can tell, cold wave only stops cards that are like activated from the hand. It, I, I got it ruled in my favor at the YCS, so I've been playing it like that. A dark coffin activates from the cold wave. Um, one mirror force, one torrential. Uh, those are staples in my opinion, just if you're playing traps. Um, yeah, it turns on mirror force. Uh, one compulsory evacuation device. This stops synchro, and it also can be chained to Scat Dragon. So if I have it set, I target it, I target an opponent's card, I flip it, their monster goes back to their hand, I'm free to attack directly, and I got a neutral and put a card back in their hand. Uh, one called Haunted. This is actually really, really important. Um, obviously, you can bring back a Scrap Dragon if it dies, but also if you bring back like a Tuner or a Chimera or something, and then you Synchro with whatever you call the Haunted is, then you still have it on the field, and it's a Scrap Dragon target. So usually you're going to end up Synchroing for a Scrap Dragon. When you do that, you can just pop the call off and get a free plus one. And that's when at least one trap stun, just for a little bit of extra insurance against the background. Well, let's get the side deck real quick. The extra uh, deck is probably pretty essential. Right? Yeah. Um, the side deck is actually very important in this build because I, I think every single game except for round one, I sided in at least eight cards. And uh, I'll kind of try and show you how I do that a little bit. Uh, first up is going to be two Cyber Dragon. Um, this gives you an access to Scrap Twin as well. He's a five star and you can summon a beast and make a twin. But he's also just kind of big. He, gets, he also helps bait out those bottomlesses and stuff to, you know, just make better plays. 
Uh, next is two Thunder King. I mean, you can get five Thunder King against a lot of things. It stops synchros, uh, which is important, and it stops searching, so it stops sabers, black wings, uh, quick draw. I really side Thunder King in against everything because I usually side out my five actually. Um, one green baboon. This card's really good against uh, black wings and against quick draw because they have a lot more destruction effects than most decks. Oh, and also Gemini. If a beast type monster that you control is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can pay a thousand life points to special summon card from your hand or your graveyard. Um, your beasts are Chimera and Trappy. They're not machines. They're very like they're very central to the deck. So you're gonna be breaking them out a lot. And if you use Trap Storm at Chainlink One, you can just special that move. Or if they use Icarus or if they use Black Rose, then you get a free 2600 meter, which can take care of a lot of their effects. By just paying a thousand. Yep, just paying a thousand, even from the graveyard. Um, one effect failure. Uh, it's pretty stable. I actually just threw this in the day, and it's pretty good against um, Plant Synchro, round seven. Uh, I had one extra copy back for the Synchro heavy decks like Sabres and like Quick Draw. Uh, one Tevis for Infernities and Light Swarm. And then Free Decree. I do side in Decree because. I just feel like it's more effective that way, where I, once I know what I'm playing, I can really side out the traps that I want to side out. Like, if I'm playing Black Wings, I want to keep in Bottomless, but I might not need Mirror Force. If I'm playing against Quick Draw, I can just pretty much side everything out. Um, and it gives me more room to side in, like, the monsters, like the Cyber Dragons and the Thunder Kings, and it really changes up the deck, so it's harder for opponents to sideboard against it. And Game 1, if they see a Dark Coffin, they don't want to side in MSCs, because they're going to know, oh, Blind MSC is just going to hit Dark Coffins or something like that. So then the Decrees are free to go rampant. Uh, two enemy controllers, they go in alongside Decrees just to keep, um, you know, a field presence and to help with a little bit of defense. Uh, and then two of them cross out for big keepers and quick drop and sabers sometimes. Yeah. And that's just, yeah. Let's see an extra deck. Sure. Uh, I'm playing two twin dragon. I recently just put in one today and I actually found it very important. I wouldn't have won round seven if it wasn't for the fact that I played two twin dragon. So, I mean, it's just nice to have the extra one around. And your extra deck space seems kind of tight, but it's really not because your most oftentimes used targets are going to be Scrap Dragons with Twin Dragons, so I just think playing two is nice. But you can play one and still be effective, correct? Um, I think so, yeah. Okay. Like, it was just the one situation where I did end up bringing out two Twin Dragons, so I think I'm going to keep two for now, but I don't think you have a problem playing one. Uh, next is three Scrap Dragon. I mean, that's obviously very important. Uh, one Colossal Fighter, just because. Also, one Stardust Dragon. Important, because you start a dragon. And also, these guys are going to be the ones you want to bring out with, like, Summoner Monk or Spy. Normally, you want to go Scrap Dragon, but in certain situations, uh, you want to go start a Dragon or a Colossal for whatever reason. Or if you run out of Scrap Dragons, you know, which has happened. Uh, one Chimera Tech, because I've had the Cyber Dragons and Machina. Uh, one Arc Fiend, because Scrap Chimera can only synchro with other Scrap Tuners, or with mm -hmm. other Scrap Synchro materials, and it can only synchro for a Scrap Monster. So if your only target is Goblin, this is the only guy you can bring out. So it's nice to have, like, a big feeder that you can at least have the option to bring. One Black Rose Dragon, and he's really good. That's you play him right. Uh, two Arcanites for the Spies. Uh, spies with Spellcaster, and then Goblin creates their tuner, so that makes Arcanite really easily. Um, one Goyo, one Brio, one Caster. And that's just... I really don't bring these guys out that much, just because my lowest star tuner is a three star. And you then, tell them, so tell them real quick that you did top in the YCS. Uh, yeah, I did get, I got top 16 at the Philly YCS. I finished with an X11 record and got 11th place overall, and then I lost top 16 to my teammate Guillermo Morales. All right, well, thank you, bro. Thank you. No and problem. um, do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I actually recently put up a very in-depth scrap discussion on my channel. Uh, it's actually my brother's channel. I just kind of go on every once in a while. Uh, it's called The Miles Kid. I will post his link below. Right around here. -ish. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, please check that out. Give us some subscribers, and we'll definitely give a shout-out to you, Winston. Thank you very much. And thank you, guys. Just, um, just try to comment on the video so um, Ryan will know what he's doing wrong with the deck, if anything. <laughs> you know, because, like, certain... Current criticism is always needed. Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure that he's open-minded, so Definitely. most of y'all know on YouTube what I'm about to say, so you already know. If it's not Corey, guys, to go do it.